To end the topic of measures of variability and central tendency, we'll dive into the median. While the average, a measure of central tendency, tells us what the center of our data is, the mode tells us our most prominent observation, the median splits our data into halves. Um, so if your data is uneven, it'll take the value right in the middle. So for example, you have 20, 10, and 30. What the median will do is order your data, so 10, 20, 30, and it'll, it'll just take the value right in the middle, the value that would split your data into halves. So what would be our value in the middle? What would be our median? Well, obviously it would be 20. So you have split your data into halves. And um, what would happen if your data is even? So for example, you have 10, 20, 30, and 40. Obviously there's not a single value that would split your data into halves. If you would take 20, no, you would not split your data into halves. If you would take 30, again, you would not split your data into halves. So what we would do is, we we'll just take both values and divide them by two. You take an average of them. And this would be our median, okay? Now, you might say you wanna have a quick overview of the spread of your data. What you could do is draw a histogram, the one we did in an earlier video. Um, another great way is to draw a box plot. So they usually look like this. So you have your scale, mine is ranging from zero to 100. You have a little box in there. You have these things. And maybe there, there are some points. And of course, very important, this bar. Okay, now, um, they're ac they, I know they look a bit weird, but they're actually pretty easy to read. Now, what does this huge bar mean? This huge bar right here, this is our median. Now, what does that mean? The median splits our data into half. So if this is the value 50, this would mean that 50% of our data is below the value 50 and 50% of our data is above the value 50. And um, the same goes for the... Um, um, for the lower boundary of our box, this part right here, this is the first quartile, meaning that seven, uh, that 25% of our data falls below this point. So if this is 40, this would mean that 25% um, of our data is below the value 40. And the same goes for the upper part, this part right here. This is the third quartile, meaning that 75% of our data is below this uh, values, value. So if this is 55, this would mean that 75% of our data is below the value 55. Now, what are those things? Those things right here. These are whiskers. They attempt to capture the data outside the box, but these whiskers will never exceed 1.5 times the length of our box. Now, also, you can see some points right there outside the whiskers. Now, what's so special about them? Just, just think about it. Well, obviously, there are, there are uh, unusual observations. There are outliers. Um, they're very far away from our box and our median. And um, now, now, why are these outliers of interest? Well, first of all, maybe they represent actual error in your data. Maybe you put in a wrong number. Um, and secondly, outliers can have an extreme impact on our data analysis. We'll cover this later in an extensive manner, but outliers can really destroy your, in other respects, absolutely decent model. Um, they could also skew your measures of central tendency, such as your average, um, because there, there are such high and low values, and they're really extreme values. So the uh, box plot is always a great way to look for outliers in your data.